All right, now that was the first chain rule. And the reason why I picked that out before I got to this is because if I just change it a little bit, in fact, you might even say, I might make it a little simpler. Making it simpler, sort of, actually makes it kind of harder. Why? Like now that we don't have the cos there, what problems does that introduce for us? I don't, I don't have the, um, the derivative of the inside function anymore. So I'm like, what does this thing come from? Right? It certainly doesn't come from this, because if I, you know, if I go backwards, this is where I end up. And you can't just magic up a cos. I'll just multiply by cos and divide by cos at the same time. Uh, by the way, why can't I do that? I can do that with constants. Why can't I do it with cos? Because of mass. Because mass says so. Is there a specific reason, a specific mathematical reason why we can't? Because I seem to do it willy-nilly around here. Because uh, it's got a variable in it. It's got a variable in it. And not just any variable, it's the variable I'm interested in, right? We saw the same thing with limits, right? When the limit's h approaching 0, I can actually move x in and out because it's not the variable that I'm worried about. Anyway, that's an aside. What can we do with this? What can we do with this? What can we possibly muck around with? Now, okay, some of you are like, I've seen this before, okay. Let me just try and backpedal for those of you who don't recognize this, right? Remember, I keep saying this over and over again. I wonder how, um, how sick of this you're getting. I keep saying that so much of maths, I wonder how much actually. So much of maths is about taking a problem you don't recognize and that you don't know how to work on and twisting and turning into some other form that you do know how to work with, right? A lot of maths is just dedicated to changing problems from insoluble to soluble. Can you tell I didn't do chemistry? Anyway, so the question is, what could I turn this into out of all of this stuff that could possibly be useful to me? Or, or how could I do it? Hmm. Are there any good candidates? Where would you think first? Would, would it be easy to turn something of degree two into just something into straight degree one. Could we do that? Yeah. How many, hmm. <laughs> If I told you, for instance, you know, integrate this, right, that's degree two, you can shift and change that a lot, but you're never gonna turn it to something degree one, I don't think, anyway, okay? Not simply, not in simple terms. These guys are out, okay? So it's got to be something a little more complicated. What could I use? What, what here would be more useful to me than this? Okay. Now think, I said it's identities, right? Now I've heard it a few times. The identity that you want that's most useful to you is cos 2x. Now some of you are like, where does that guy come from? Why him of all people? That seems a bit random. It's not even a sign that matches with this. Well, the reason why it's cos is because cos is useful. Cos is useful, the double angle formula for cos is useful, in a way that the double angle formula for sine is not. What's the normal standard way of expanding this? Cos squared minus sine squared. Yes, that's the standard way, okay? But because these are both squareds, I can turn either one of these into something else depending on what's more convenient to me. Example, I could turn the sine squared into um, 1 minus cos squared. I could do that, couldn't I? Double negative, that would give me 2 cos squared minus 1. Just as equally, I could change the cos into a 1 minus sine squared, which would leave me with 1 minus 2 sine squared. So this is kind of handy. Cos 2x is unique in this way. Sine 2x doesn't do it, right? I can put it in this form or this form or this form, all of which are useful in different kinds of scenarios, right? So which one am I after? Cle clearly the top one, okay? Now I don't have one minus two sine squared x there, but the difference between this and that is just a few constants, right? And I can, I can deal with that. Uh, sorry, right, one minus two sine squared is cos two x, so how do I make it the subject? I want, I'm after this. Uh, take the one over. And then, I'm struggling. And then divide by negative two, which will do two things. Number one, it'll stick a half here. And number two, it'll turn this around. 
that okay? Let's see if this is any better. Now you can see that even though in normal terms we would prefer something like this to this. If you've got a trig identities question and they said simplify, you got to this, right? You'd, you'd, you'd get fired if you put this as your answer, right? But in our case, to integrate, this is infinitely better than this, right? I can do this. This is, oh, it's so much better. Um, <laughs> I've got that half. I'm going to stick it out the front because as a constant, it doesn't matter where I put it. And then I've got my 1 minus cos 2x there. Is that okay? What does it equal? That's going to turn into x. That's going to turn into minus a half sine plus constant. Okay? It's just like one of these. It just took a little bit of twisting and turning. 